here we are live back at camp two Spoilers, favorite show. What is it? <laughs> Looks like we're gone. We are live. My mic sounds weird in my headphones. I don't know why. I don't know. Something's, something might be different, but we'll see. He's the same person, really. I really am the same person. <laughs> or am I? Dun, dun, am dun. I? Um, hi, everybody. <clears throat> We're back with part two of our favorites from 2022. We're going to do some shows today. Ooh. Mm. I, I looked at some lists of the best shows, as I did with the movies, to see if there's anything I'd forgotten that I'd watched. And it's a lot of stuff we haven't watched, of course. Of course, naturally. It's just only mm-hmm. so much time we have. But, um, you know, a lot of stuff I'm not really interested in watching ever. So there's that too yep but uh with the ones we did see we picked out a couple favorites and um ones we were um you know want to talk about so number three chainsaw man Ooh, yeah i enjoyed this i'm happy to talk about an anime on the channel Mm. for the first time yep welcome anime people (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say straight up that I'm an anime fan because mm-hmm. there's a lot of animes that I genuinely hate. Um, it, you know, it's like any genre. It has some classics, some masterpieces, and of also course. some total trash. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like anime possibly has a lot of total trash uh, compared to other genres. It's kind of like horror. Like, it's hard to make a good one, maybe. Mm-hmm. For sure. Music is like that, too. Mm -hmm. music genres they've all got the best of the best and they've all got some really bad stuff too yeah so Mm -hmm. uh chainsaw man though i kind of stumbled onto it by accident um i was just looking for something new to start and the visuals um really grabbed me to start watching it um the art style is pretty cool Uh, I really like it, actually. It's very detailed, and then the scenery has like a three-dimensional element that they're doing with uh, CG. Oh. Um, Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. The, you know, the fight scenes are really sharp and flashy, but also like not like Dragon Ball Z where lots of flashing and, you know, just like cuts of their face, like Mm -hmm. bulging with veins and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess... You haven't seen this one yet, so I nope. uh, And our audience probably hasn't either. It, the first episode just released in October of 2022. Oh, okay, so very recently. It's very recent, yeah. And right now, I want to say there's 12 episodes of okay. season one. So it's you know it's a little baby right now in its development. <laughs> um, so I can't speak. little chainsaw baby. Yeah, I'll get into chainsaw babies, but uh, <laughs> as far as the show goes. I haven't been able to form conclusions based on the whole uh, arc of the story because it's still new. Um, Mm -hmm. But as far as my initial impressions, I was very impressed. Um, It was definitely in my top favorite uh, animes that I saw this year. And I might even place it in my top five favorite animes I've ever seen. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Um, Not including movies, but as far as shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe number five, but uh, just to start off with kind of a brief description of what the show is about, um, it follows the main character named Denji. Um, The story just opens with him and his story where his father has a large gambling debt to either a mafia or the Yakuza, and his father dies pretty much right at the beginning, and the mafia waits after the funeral, and basically tells denji you now owe all the money that your father owed he's got to be maybe like eight years old at this time he's a very small child um and they're basically telling him we're gonna kill you if you don't start regularly paying us money um in the same scene after they leave uh denji's crying at his father's grave and he meets this little demon 
Um, he looks kind of like a little Pokemon with a chainsaw coming out of his nose hmm. um, named Pochita. And it, Pochita's injured. So Denji, you know, feeling all the sadness from his father's death, maybe isn't as afraid of this demon that he should have been. Um, so he kind of comforts the demon. He forms a quick relationship with him and nurses him back to health. Um, that's, you know, the first scene of the show. And going from there, he basically shows his life. He lives in a shack. He's scrounging for food out of uh, garbage cans. And he starts making a living to pay the Yakuza uh, by hunting demons. In this world, in the story, there's demons and there's professional organizations as well as kind of freelance mercenaries who are hunting demons uh, for money. And so Denji uses uh, his new friend Pochita to help him fight demons until very early in the show. He is basically like mortally wounded by a group of zombie demon things. And as he's dying, Pochita decides to give Denji his heart. You know, I can't explain how exactly you do that, mm. but that's kind of what starts Chainsaw Man. So now Denji has a, kind of a ripcord like you'd have on a gas engine coming out of his chest. <laughs> and when he pulls it, um, he kind of goes into a demon mode where his head transforms into a chainsaw and his arms have chainsaws coming out of it. It's kind of a tacky looking thing when you first see it. And it's why I wasn't really expecting much from this anime when I first saw it. Uh, like the pictures, it looked mm -hmm. cool, but also looked like it would be cheesy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it kind of works. And a lot of the visuals in the show are really, really well drawn. And they're pretty intense. A lot of the demon scenes have very intense visualizations a lot of gore. I wouldn't recommend this show for kids. Um, mm. It's for adults. It's just the trailer is like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't think anyone looking at the even the art of this show would think it's for kids. Right, right. Um, there's also a fairly strong sexual component to the show, although it doesn't go too far to take me out of it because that can ruin a lot of animes for me. Mm -hmm. um, but... It's a good aspect of the show. Uh, basically, early on in the story, Denji meets a character named Makima, uh, who he is immediately infatuated with. She has pink hair, and she runs uh, part of a government agency that hires demon hunters. Um, so she hires him on to is be... Is it futuristic? Or is it... You know, it's kind of like contemporary Tokyo is the setting, hmm. mm -hmm. plus demons. Okay. So people have cell phones, people have contemporary clothing. Um, this is all like demon tech, because they have these like helmets and stuff. That yes, exactly. That's not anything that he puts on. That's just what happens when he pulls the ripcord. It's oh. kind of like a transformation. Okay. Um, so that's like... Uh, yeah, that's a good question. He's a unique character. So all the other demon hunters, the way that they can fight demons is that they've made contracts with demons to share their powers in different ways. Denji is the only character who uniquely hasn't made a contract with a demon. He literally shares a heart with a demon. Um, everyone else is kind of cursed in different ways by making these contracts with demons. Hmm. And he is kind of like a human demon hybrid. And as far as I know, there's not any other characters like that in the story. Um, so he's unique. People kind of think he's like an enigma uh, that a demon would even want to give his heart to him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's a, a character that isn't your normal protagonist. Um, he's not a classic hero in the sense that he's not selfless. Um, he is a character who everything that's driving him is about his comforts um, and also his desires, which, you know, normally isn't what a hero is about. But 
what I enjoyed about this is that you really relate to Denji because he has no one in his life. He didn't have family who was close to him. They treated him poorly and now they're all gone and he has no one. So everything that he does is to achieve more comforts in his life, um, to get a kiss from a girl he likes or possibly touch a boob. Um, mm. it's yeah. that kind of thing. And it's very relatable. Um, even if you're not someone like Denji, which I wouldn't say I am, but I can relate to him and it actually makes me feel like I can relate to people like him more watching him kind of experience this life. Um, and yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, I don't want to go too much further into it because I'll end up kind of giving away things that happen in this story. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely would say it's worth a watch if you like animes and you're not squeamish um, because there is, like I said, quite a bit of gore. Um, but it's fun. I, I really like it. It's fun gore. <laughs> yep, yep. And you're anticipating a second season? I think it's done well? Yeah. I mean, I think that the 12th episode might have been the epi uh, episode that ended the first season, mm -hmm. but it wasn't totally clear. Um, and I haven't really looked at when the release date of the next episode is, uh, but Seems I would like imagine that this is successful. I'm already seeing people wearing paraphernalia. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been seeing a lot of stuff about, uh, one of the characters whose name is power. Mm -hmm. She's a fiend, this, which is kind of like a demon. I'm, I'm not exactly sure the difference, but they're. Working together, Denji and Power are now working together as demon hunters, and she's a very interesting character. And I've been seeing her pop up in memes and other things on the internet. Okay, um, so people must like it. Yeah, um, it'd probably make a spectacular Halloween costume. Oh yeah, for Being sure. Chainsaw Man. And that's another thing. I've already seen people doing cosplay of this show. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it, it's only it, been out since October. That's a good sign. It did look like they're working on season two as well. Cool. Yeah, so I'll definitely that, check it out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'd imagine there's a lot of people that wait for more seasons before they even start a show, um, mm -hmm. so they don't get <clears throat> invested in a show that's canceled or only has one season. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Um, it's also like if you don't catch it and later on you see it has multiple seasons, you think, well, it must be fairly decent if it was yep. continued. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the character is 15 or 16 for, you know, the majority of the show other than the intro. So he's not very old. Uh, and a lot of the aspects of his character are relatable because he's just a young boy who's like figuring stuff out. Um, he's driven by something other than his main head, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's, it's interesting. Okay, cool. Sounds good. <clears throat> I can check that one out. And since you brought it up, I, I would, this is a good time to make a note that since the last episode, we, unfortunately, we opened and closed with the Andrew Tate theme song. And I would like to apologize and say I've been reformed and I don't even want to touch boob anymore. Oh God! <laughs> Since you and you, you brought it up, you mentioned it, and I just was thinking, wow, like I don't even want to do that anymore. I'm just like a new man. I just want to let our viewers know this oh, and say um, we will be more hesitant with our media. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it is definitely good to say that even though we played the Andrew Tate's theme song. It's not because we idolize him in any way. He's more of a character that we find amusing. That's true. I did. I did find him amusing. But now I don't even find him amusing. I find him deeply offensive. Mm. <laughs> Personally. Like, just mm -hmm. want to put that out there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Apologies. I'm a new man. Uh, maybe that's why my mic sounds different today. <laughs> less, to, <laughs> less testosterone. No um, more top G energy. <laughs> Is there a top G option on this microphone? <laughs> Plus 10 top G decibels. Um, all right. So that's number three. Number two um, was a contender for number one. But I think there's a couple of reasons why it is not number one. And this is House of the Dragon. 
Mm -hmm. which we have talked about quite a bit on this channel. It birthed this channel. We were we had talked about doing YouTube and it was something we were definitely um, milling about and milling over. But I was the first episode made me think I really wished we had the channel going. And the second episode, I was like, all right, we need to get this up and start doing it because there's a lot we could talk about. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, oh, yeah. So it definitely was the the again, the first couple episodes of the show were exceptional enough that we wanted to make our opinions about it public and have this time in this place to uh, talk about it on. And a, a lot of that exceptional quality continued through the season, but uh, there was some faults at the end. They kind of tripped up on a couple things and it, um, you know, unlike Chainsaw Man, possibly with you, um, for us, I think with House of the Dragon, we're going into the second season we're, we're excited about it, but we're also like <clears throat> open to the possibility it's all going to crash and burn, right? And that, I think yeah. that only happened in the last two episodes. was like, oh, <sighs> that's right. This could all just end mm -hmm. really terribly. <laughs> but It all could have been fixed if Rhaenys had just killed everyone with that dragon. It all comes to that. That's exactly, exactly the moment. Yep. Definitely the worst <clears throat> moment of the show, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So the um, spoiler free edition that that's not much that that's not spoiling anything, but just the little, you know, um, write up of the show could be prequel to the Game of Thrones um, era mm -hmm. that we had that we were blessed to have by George R. R. Martin. He wrote a history of the Targaryen family um, going back, I think, like 300 years in total and we're covering the last 200 years of it in the show and mm -hmm. we start with king viserys where he is the the son of the king and he's um democratically elected as king um in the the opening scene and so we're following him and the choices he makes to keep the throne um and keep all of the families and the areas of the throne and um keep it peace across the throne something his father had done exceptionally well and then we start following his daughter and her friend and it, things snowball from there mm -hmm. but it's um <clears throat> basically in contrast to game of thrones i think it's a much more focused story it's focused on a smaller cast um, yes with more personal repercussions and game of thrones from the beginning it really kicks off with um kind of a nationwide brewing of war and treason and there's schemes going on and it's <clears throat> very complicated from the beginning house of the dragon has complications as well but it's it's much more focused on a smaller number of people um definitely which is interesting it's just uh it we f we felt at a certain point i know we talked about it in one of our reviews that it hinders this season at least in some ways um it it couldn't possibly have been as grand as Game of Thrones was from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But also an interesting aspect of it was, and I don't think this has anything to do with the scope of the story, but there's just um, the the characters where, you know, uh, they're, they're going all in with the gray. There's no black and white. There's no good and bad characters. And there's, mm -hmm. there's some downsides of that, I feel. But yeah. Like you mentioned, it has a lot of differences from the first uh, Game of Thrones franchise series, mm -hmm. and definitely one of them is that they're just hyper-focused on a few characters, and also what you just mentioned, it's just there's not characters that really show this noble character that makes you want them to succeed. Um, for me, mm -hmm. watching it, mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. said, it there's more gray in all the characters, um, whereas in Game of Thrones, you had several Starks and some other characters that you just really are rooting for from the beginning um, because of some of their actions that show selflessness or family bonds. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And there's definitely more like you wouldn't really care that much if most of these characters died in House of Dragons. Yeah, not as much. Yeah. Not as much for sure. <clears throat> yeah. 
But I would say, uh, on this note of comparing it to Game of Thrones, that there were some things uh, that I thought they really succeeded at. Um, I would be shocked if anyone would argue that this show wasn't beautifully visualized. Um, from the costumes to the settings to the characters and the acting. Um, just CGI every scene dragons. you're watching. Oh, the, the, the yeah. Dragons. yeah. <laughs> I think the dragons were even better than in uh, Game of Thrones. They were, absolutely. Um, yeah. I don't know if they'll ever make a dragon scene that was more memorable than when Daenerys kind of births the dragons mm -hmm. in Game of mm -hmm. Thrones. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, but they're baby dragons, so it doesn't really give you the scale and the power of what a dragon is. Um, House of Dragons does. There's multiple scenes that are really great, and they just showcase uh, the imagination of dragon flight and the power of dragon fire and the fear that they really put into people when they see them. For sure, for um, sure. I so just realized you can't see my screen, right? I can't, no. Okay, I'll let me share that now. And, um, yeah, I mean, the, I think the failures in the show were not making characters that had more, uh, you know, audience appeal where you really want them to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they have more of that in the second season. You know, it's not too late for that to turn around. The story was still relatively interesting. For sure. Oh, yeah. There's a lot to it. There's mm -hmm. a lot to it. It's not a simple story. Right. Yeah. And Viserys, uh, I feel like by saying that there's no characters you're, you're rooting for, it, it kind of puts the wrong light on King Viserys because he is someone you come to respect through the show. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. though he shows moments of weakness. Uh, of course, yeah. But you still do respect him and you really feel something uh, during a couple of his speeches in mm. the season. Um, and he did a great job. It's too for bad sure. he didn't get any kind of awards for his I acting. I know. I was really surprised. He, he had no nominations, no Emmys coming his way. And that's surprising. He just went above and beyond. Yeah. Um, I felt so strongly for his state of just his sickness especially towards the end it just got it got harder and harder to watch him mm -hmm. um and then uh, the last episode with him is uh it's really rough it's hard to watch and he just did an amazing job patty constantine i believe mm -hmm. is his name mm -hmm. um i think this uh picture here this freeze frame i'm on is a perfect well example of what we're talking about with the <clears throat> we can only see a little bit of her shoulder here but you can see there's more detail in this shoulder and collar than several other fantasy shows that came out this year will have in their whole costume mm -hmm. um everything and i we both went through a lot of these episodes very slowly in second rewatches or like just paying close attention there's texture in wear on everything there's it's either mm -hmm. immaculate nobleman's garment or it's um you know like it, right now she just got off from a dragon ride so she's in her dragon riding clothes and they look like clothes you'd wear while riding a dragon and yes on her side she has the dragon and you have immaculate crisp cgi of the scales again the textures all there um and then it fades away and out of focus, um, so the the it's just great work with the CGI there. And then, but there was something about her. Oh, because the third note of this freeze frame is her, uh, Renera. Her hair is immediately calls back to Daenerys because we all know mm -hmm. Daenerys, and most of the people who watch the show know Daenerys. And so, the point being that I think it is fair. The more I thought about it it's very very fair to compare this with game of thrones i know there are some yes. that would argue that we should let this stand on its own and there's an aspect of of um and you know we can analyze it in that way too but i think at the end of the day we're comparing this to game of thrones because mm -hmm. it builds so much of its uh emotional depth off of what we already know about these characters and there's um, a sense of doom we have from the very beginning with the Targaryens, and that's because we know what happens with the Targaryens. Mm -hmm. And 
There's the sense of knowing Rhaenyra because of her hair, and that's because we know of Daenerys, and so you know what I'm getting at. It's just yeah, we can't we can't separate the two in. Um, or, I'm sorry, I'll rephrase that. We can separate the two in certain aspects for certain reasons, but again, at the end of the day, this is part of the Game of Thrones world. For and, sure. Uh, yeah, it's just what's going to happen. So. Yeah, and you know, there's stuff going on here that was a little weird with childbirth throughout the season too. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't feel like that when I watched Game of Thrones. I did, you know, maybe mm. a few of the characters that they changed from the book to make them gay was something that was noticeable in the first season. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this one, it just felt like they were trying to say like childbearing is super, super difficult and not worth it a lot yes. of the time. Yeah. And I just didn't really like that message. Um, that yeah. stuck with me. I mean, it kind of uh, was sticking out to me as well. And I thought maybe that's what they were going for it. But I definitely didn't make the conclusion that that was what they were going for until it, it you know, it started coming out more and more interviews they were having with the writers. And it was like, mm. that is what they were going for. And yeah. they were referencing, you know, like, Roe versus Wade being overturned and all that stuff was going on as the show was coming out uh, for, you know, more casual viewers. They don't realize that all of this, this was all written years ago. It was filmed some parts of it more than a year ago. And a lot of these things were set in stone. And then Mm -hmm. after the fact, a lot of these productions will take advantage of social things going on. And, you know, the interviews they're doing are current. They're a week or a month old or maybe days old. Um, and they'll they'll insert much more contemporary things happening um, mm. <clears throat> into a story that was already written two or three years ago. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's manipulative and it's kind of boring as well. And it dates your thing. Like, you're, you, something that really strikes me. It's like, you want this to be just as good in 10 years in 20 years, in 30 years. That's the that's your goal as the artist and when they put these like timestamps on it, it's con- it's confusing to me. It's like mm-hmm. they don't have a great perspective of what their purpose is, which is to make something timeless. I mean, it mm-hmm. not and not everything has to be timeless, but it's, you know, you're making a medieval setting show. You don't have to have it be contemporary in its uh themes, but mm-hmm. they just can't help themselves. Yeah, and like you're saying, it's uh, changes that are made after the original story is written, um, mm-hmm. which is you know why I mentioned the some of the characters in the original franchise of Game of Thrones being uh, changed to be homosexuals. It doesn't bother me that there's homosexual characters in the story at all, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but when you interject something after the story's already been written, it can feel, without any research into the uh, story, it can feel like it was transplanted. Uh, yes, and I feel yes. like we got that vibe multiple times with this uh, House of Dragon story mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're probably not seeing season two until 2024. I would imagine. Oh, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> it is so, a big production. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I guess I'll wrap up what I have to say and then you can give a conclusion here. But mm-hmm. I would definitely say... Uh, this was a really well-made show in a lot of ways. Um, we picked it apart pretty deeply throughout it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some things, uh, especially for me with the hyper-focus on Rhaenyra and Alicent, mm. that just felt a little bit too much. Like, I would have preferred to see more of some of the other characters. Um, but yeah, that, those are... Uh, you know, critiques that weren't keeping me from liking the show. I enjoyed watching it. Um, like I already said, the scene with Rainus was the main thing I didn't like, like straight up did not like in the story. Mm. And it just mm. felt like so unrealistic. Um, but other than that, the 
you feel like you're in Westeros. The it's just beautiful. The music, the environments, the clothing, the acting, uh, it's all top notch. Top and notch. it's really hard to achieve that. So kudos to them. Mm. Um, definitely holds a solid place at number two uh, show for this year. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with the music, too. That's worth noting for sure. From the first scene, the music really brings you back to that Westeros, mm. uh, that vibe. It's, it's just right away they do a great job with the music for sure there's a lot of new themes but some recurring little themes you put in here and there too to bring you back so they did a great job um and we'll see where it goes the again yeah, the other rainy's thing was stupid it was just plain dumb it was a, a poor poor decision from the writers to do what they did with that um and for that reason it's only number two but number one was for me, Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul, a mm. lot of anticipation going into this. Um, you know, speaking of how, you know, this is actually perfect with uh, Lord of the Rings. I mean, <laughs> with Lord of the Rings, with uh, House of the Dragon saying mm. that it's, you know, it's not a particularly vital to separate it from Game of Thrones, if possible at all, to entirely separate it from Game of Thrones. It was impossible to separate Better Call Saul from Breaking Bad in comparisons and anticipating certain flows with the story. There's certain things that they did with the Better Call Saul uh, story that we were kind of anxious to see if they were going to one up themselves in any way. And <clears throat> I I wouldn't be prepared to say one upped Breaking Bad in any way, but I would I am confident in saying that um i it lived up to the expectations mm -hmm. um if that makes sense yeah. you know i wouldn't say it was better or worse than honestly it's different it's its own thing um and it just had just to my surprise i had a lot of uh just anxiety over like what was going to happen with these characters a lot of characters i really cared about kim wexler in particular mm. she's my favorite in the show i love kim great great awesome character powerhouse intelligent confusing she doesn't make a whole she doesn't make perfect sense you think you've got her all figured out and there's certain things that are developing in the second to last season that you start questioning that and then you uh end up not knowing what she's thinking even and uh which was just really interesting masterful writing with the characters um definitely um so i we are being spoiler free in general we were a little bit less so with house of the dragon but it's been out for a while i'm just thinking chainsaw man and better call or yeah better call saul haven't been out very long Better Call Saul, I saw, I rented one episode at a time through Amazon, through AMC. I think it was through AMC, but it was on the, AM, the Amazon website. I don't know. It was a big thing. I was seeing online. A lot of people weren't able to watch it yet. They have to wait till it's on Netflix or to buy it on DVD. So we're going light. I'm going light with yeah. it. And you, you haven't seen it. so Correct. I've seen all the seasons but the last one. Right. right um, so. For the reasons you just said. Yeah, I definitely don't want to give give much away i if you are a fan of breaking bad <clears throat> and you haven't seen this um because you were you know just didn't want it to rub your breaking bad sacred vibe feeling you have for that show as i was i didn't watch until the second season a friend of mine told me to give it a try um i thought it was a cash grab I'm sorry, Vince, but Vince Gilligan is a legend. I love Vince, and thank you so much for making this show what it was. He wasn't trying to copy Breaking Bad. It was, no. it really was an original thing. Yes, and um, it it broke off in all the ways we needed it to. And then, you know, we had a lot of fun playing with the Breaking Bad world, especially, you know, more towards the end. That starts to happen in the last couple of seasons. There's some interlocking moments between the past present and future that's something about the last season that was amazing is he plays a lot with the timeline and it's very clear at any point in time where you are in the timeline 
He does that through gorgeous black and white photography. The, the black and white photography in all of this is so gorgeous. It's a perfect, you want about 30% gray, 30% white, 30% black. It's kind of what the, the prime black and white photography goes for. And it's just any freeze frame you can find of the black and white uh, scenes. That's what you got. It's, it's mm. just gorgeous textbook black and white photography, which I love. Mm -hmm. And it helps you, uh, it helps orient you. So, you know, where you are in the timeline and then, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, I'm just trying not to, there's a lot I want to say about it. We'll do, you know, after it comes out on Netflix, we'll give it like a month or so, and then we'll do another rundown because, um, this was six or seven years coming, I think. Mm. And, um, yeah, great ending. I just loved it. Yeah. Yeah. My, what I would say about this show, because I haven't seen the last season, um, mm -hmm. but I still don't want to even give spoilers from the earlier seasons, because this is a really good show. Um, me and my wife watch a lot of shows together, and usually one of us is watching it because the other one really likes it, and even if we like it, it's not our favorite. Mm -hmm. But this show, we both really enjoyed. Like This was, for so many audiences, this would be enjoyable. Um and it's just, I would say a masterpiece, but I haven't seen the last season. Um, it just hits all of those marks. Um, the acting, I don't think you're going to find much better acting than this show. Um, Saul Goodman is incredible to me. I love when he just looks like he's under pressure and he's got the sweats a little bit or he starts grinding his teeth because he's thinking about doing something kind of shady mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, he just really captures uh, what the character is doing mm. so well. Mm. Um, and you just root for him. You know, he, he has some shady moments uh, throughout, but you're, you really understand him. Uh, I really love him as the protagonist of the show. Uh, he's very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, and similar to what I would say about, uh, oh my God, the first franchise of this one. Yeah, uh, Walt. Yeah, like Walt? similar to what I would say about Walt and Breaking Bad mm -hmm. is that the filmography, they're filming everyday things most of the time. Mm. Like they're filming a suburban house. This is they're a great filming point a courtroom we've seen these things a billion times yes. but somehow with uh the movie magic or the film magic that mm -hmm. they're doing here it's just so crisp it's so beautiful um, so interesting and so original. interesting yeah what they're showing with the camera is unique where the camera is when the character is talking is well thought out and it's not boring mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yeah it's really good uh the theme song also just so good like if you hear that if i heard that 20 years from now you'll know, know never right saw away. this again yeah, yeah, yeah right away i would know where it's from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it yeah it hits a lot of marks for me really love it um and it has a lot of that uh you know kind of toying with what is morality what is the right thing for this character to do is this that bad um, <laughs> is you it know? that bad how bad is this <laughs> yeah like i don't know yeah i really yeah, yeah. like it though i there's several scenes with kim wexler too she's also one of our favorites me and leah love her mm. um but mm. there's several things with her where you're like what is the right thing to do in this situation? Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. getting put in these high profile client situations uh, that you don't necessarily know what the right answer is. And you kind of watch it like a real person is going through it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's really what makes it great. The realism is top notch. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that uh, I agree with all that for sure. Would, after you've seen the last season, would you say that this show is a masterpiece? I I think of a masterpiece as like I can't see any flaws in it and the plot is very important for that. So like there might be some style issues I have that I would still consider a masterpiece. Like might maybe it's not my style, but I think a masterpiece has to have a bulletproof plot. Mm -hmm. I think some of the heists in both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, there's a few heists that aren't very sensible. They're not very realistic. They're a lot of fun. Some of them 
are like, could this really happen? The train heist in Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Like, if, I feel like that could happen. I feel like somebody could do that. Um, and then there's like the we're going to put a super powered magnet on the outside of this police uh, building right on the other side of this wall that they keep all of their evidence in. And we're going to destroy this computer with this big magnet. It's like, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so yeah. I, without giving anything away, like I think there's a little bit of that where, you know, my first, I, I've only seen it once and the first viewing, I had a lot of fun and I was totally with it. And there was a little part of me that's like, I'm not going to pick this heist apart. I'm not going to like get into this right now. I'll do it later. So I'm hesitant to call it that. Okay. Um, but I, I would definitely, you know, regardless of a second viewing and the little things that might pop up in that, I would say I wasn't let down. I, I really, I didn't feel let down at all. I, I've been watching this with uh, my dad, you know, not together, but we, we would talk about it like every Monday um, okay. about yep. the last episode. And uh, both of us, for he had different feelings about the show, different this and that, but we both felt like mm-hmm. we were satisfied. You know, that's hard. Yeah. That's really hard to do with the finale. So, I mean, not even just hard, but you know how many shows there are about legal situations and and lawyers and courtrooms and stuff. Mm. It's so hard to be unique within that genre because mm-hmm. there's so much of it. It's just one of the most overplayed thing in TV dramas. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it didn't feel even comparable to most of those shows. I didn't even think about them. I never yeah. thought about them watching the show. It, it really is its own thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very unique. And I, I really appreciated that about this show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, your point was perfect about it's a lot of mundane stuff. It's a lot of everyday you know, there's a lot of conversations between a boyfriend and girlfriend in their apartment over dinner. Mm -hmm. It happens a lot. It probably happens in every episode, maybe more than once sometimes. And it's like just the, the opening shots of every scene. There's always like some weird, you're like, you know, that confusing, like, what am I even looking at? There's water bubbling and then a fish swims by. You're like, Oh, it's a fish tank. Oh, we're in Saul's apartment. Okay. I know where I am. That's fun. It's a lot of fun. And they just do that over and over and over again. Um, they just find finding a unique novel perspective of a very mundane environment is, uh, it's just really brilliant how they kept doing it over and over again. Just mm-hmm. a lot of the same crew. They kept as much of the, the crew as possible from Breaking Bad. So it really yeah. is a continuation. That's similar with House of the Dragon, too, where in a way you feel like it's like Breaking Bad season nine. How many seasons they have? But you know what I mean. It's it's like the next season of the same show. Mm-hmm. Um, in I, I mean that in quality. The quality is that good. It's it is as if they just continued upping their game. But with markers and unique things they did to separate it from Breaking Bad, for sure. So, yeah, best and of both worlds. What I would say, too, just like Breaking Bad, is that there's a very intelligent writer behind this story. Um, some of the scenes and some of the dialogue is just so witty. Um, and it's also like showcasing the individual character's personality being the kind of witty that they would be Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. just so good at that yes yes how did you think of that for sure yeah vince gilligan he is brilliant he really is he's um he's a madman um i think a lot of it comes from him he he had a good staff but like a, a writing crew i mean but his some of his writing staff they've already gone off and worked on other projects one of them worked on she hulk one of them oh, worked God. on, um, I believe it was the Lord of the Rings show, Rings of Power. Um, there's a, okay, so something that's interesting when you start looking into the writers is that you see, you do see that happen. You see writers at the top of their game while they're working under the showrunner. Um, in this case, it would be Vince Gilligan. And then they go off to work under another showrunner, and it's abysmal. Like, this is just like, what what is like like you're shocked to look into him and see like oh my god you worked on you wrote that episode of better call Saul. you wrote that episode of breaking bad like 
it's not even the same person because a lot of it comes down to the showrunner. So that makes um, sense. Yeah, the show, he's got the vision. He's got the vision. He's got the the last say for one. He's got the um, coordinating between the writing room and prepping for filming. It's just uh, it's really complicated. It's really exhausting and it it's demanding physically but also your creativity is just like you have to be on it all the time and you know like the directors showrunners they answer hundreds of questions a day and all of them have an impact on the product and you've got to keep your eye on the prize you can't um you know it's not even just making a decision out of great options like sometimes they're making decisions based on like several poor options like this actor is not available today um, on on that week um, we only have this spot for a day you know it's all crazy number of things can come up so the showrunner um, you know Vince Gilligan it's a uh, few people could do what they do you know it's a very hard mm -hmm. position to hold and Vince Gilligan he you know he I know he worked on X-Files I don't know if that was his first gig but as far as I know, it's the the first gig he worked on that's really uh, left a staple. And he loved the X Files days, so he's a big sci fi guy. He's kind of like George R. R. Martin, where they made their bread and butter in in sci fi and then moved on to other things for a new challenge. Um, so Vince Gilligan's background is in sci fi X Files, and his upcoming project, which I don't know much about, I don't know if there's much on it yet, but it's gonna be sci fi. Cool. Let's that get sounds back good. into the sci-fi. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll do uh, space law, mm. maybe. <laughs> uh, Lawyers in space. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Meth in space. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna learn more about meth living in South Carolina. I think so. We might I think be, I already uh, have. I know we might be meeting some uh, Walter Whites around here. Yeah. 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 I hear some. Uh, Thumpings going on late, mm. late into the night. Some days, at the very least, I see some Jesse Pinkmans out there for sure. Yeah, that that's right. And skinny, skinny Pete. Yeah, for sure. There's a couple yeah. skinny Pete's running around here. <laughs> yeah, <for laughs> you sure. know, and which which is you know probably it's probably true. There's probably a couple Waltz walking around too. You know. Oh yeah, you won't know them though. You know. Yeah, that's they'll true. be like Gus Fring. They'll be like yeah. all dressed up nice and acting oh. like professionals. You know. They'll have businesses that are uh, their covers. You know? I just stay away from the fried chicken shops. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of those down here, too. Yeah. The Tropical Grill Spot, it's so good. It might be run by a Gus type of guy. <laughs> it's yeah. really good. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, so Better Call Saul, I totally recommend it. There, there might be some way to watch it now that I don't know of, you know. Yeah, illegally. I mean, I'm not one of those internet pirates. I'm not downloading anything <laughs> illegally. Um, yeah. So I do wait for it to come on to the streaming services I have. So I can't wait for it to come on Netflix. They've got every season but the last one. Yeah, it should be out. So I know before it took them so long to put it up because they wanted it to coincide with the release of the next season. So maybe this season they'll put it out quicker. Um Mm -hmm. Before it was taking like a year and a half or so. Oh, you just showed a couple characters that I really like. Uh, Mike was in this one. Yes. He was in the original uh, series, Breaking mm -hmm. Bad. And he's just as good as ever. And he, yeah, I don't want to give anything away, but he's just been awesome throughout. Yeah. So many things that surprised me, that being one of them. Mm -hmm. It's like they didn't ruin Mike. How did you not ruin Mike? Yeah, you know, and uh, who's the young Spanish kid? Uh, I loved him. I like him a lot too. Yeah. I really feel I for say, his character. Was it Otto? That's somebody else. But yeah, I I really liked him. Yeah, he's he was great throughout. I mean, lots of good characters, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely those two were great to see back. And they didn't ruin their characters. Uh, I would say they made them better. For sure. For sure. I don't think they ruined anybody or anything. No, no. To be honest, yeah. except for maybe Cinnabon. 
I don't know <laughs> if you want to go there now that See, you've kind of seen it. Maybe this is his uh, his thing. He's like, I'm going to get people to stop going to fried chicken spots, get them to stop <laughs> going, eating so many Cinnabons. For sure. Yeah, Nacho. His name mm, goes Nacho by the name Varga. Nacho mm. Varga. Yeah. So he, good. He looks like a, a buddy of ours. Evan as like a Spanish guy. Oh my God. <laughs> right. That's hilarious. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. It's like, Hey, so you want to talk about a retirement plan? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You want to talk about your financial stability? Mm-hmm. Let's talk a 10 year plan. Let's go right now. Um, yeah. Rhea Seahorn. Amazing job. What? Mm-hmm. I, I can't wait to see whatever she's in next. I'll watch it. Cause she's great. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, shout out to somebody who was unfortunately not around for the final season for reasons. But Michael McKeon was amazing as the brother. Mm. Oh, he uh, passed away in real life? Well, he passed away in the show. Oh, I didn't know we were saying that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, that was like season three. You're right. You're right. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I will put it underneath uh, spoilers for season three of Better Call Saul. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even that much of a spoiler if you don't know the condition of his demise, because Mm -hmm. that's really Mm -hmm. what's significant. That's true. That's a good point, actually. That's true. So. Oh, Oh, you. Yeah. You. Oh, look at that. Man, I just want to touch that forehead. (laughs) I want to, like, make a wish while rubbing it or something. (laughs) He should have played the genie, not Will Smith. Yeah, he, for real. He should have been the genie. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah. So, all right. Better call Sal. Two thumbs up. Um, yeah, so we're going to do some movies um, in the next couple weeks. We're thinking of, um, there's two in mind. Pearl, Glass Onion. Oh, uh, also, I wanted to mention, this. it came out in 2021, so, and I didn't see it until this past summer. But honorable mention for oh well, I'll do my favorite TV show of 2021 was the um oh crap what was the name of it it was called the uh, oh man I can't even think of the name of it now um is it by the Knives Out people no it was animated it was animated oh oh oh, oh no uh, I didn't plan on mentioning it but it just crossed my mind uh, I can't Arcane. Arcane Arcane dude. It's so good, and they are going to be coming out with the season two this year. So we're going to do a review of Arcane at some point. It's so mm-hmm. so good. It it might it's like the maybe the best animation I've ever seen. It's I just can't can't say enough good things about it. We're probably going to do a run through and get ready for that before it comes out this later this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to rewatch that. That was good, but I ended up falling off. I think before the end of the season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you had a lot going on at that point in time. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of life stuff moving and mm-hmm. all sorts of things. So, But, um, yeah, so we have some plans coming up in the coming weeks, and uh, we'll be back. We'll be back with more. But, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Uh, so long, 2022. That's the last we'll talk of you. Yeah, seriously. Sometime soon we'll uh, look back and be like, man, I'm glad it's not 2022. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> but until next time, everyone, use your head. Oh, stop.